So I've been thinking about camping a lot because it's been really good, good camping weather lately and I miss camping. I was driving back to Iowa for Easter this last week, this last weekend. I saw, a, you know, of course, it's spring, so I saw a bunch of the rivers flooded. So I'm going to tell this story about a camping trip on the upper Iowa River with the venture crew actually and we went we went canoeing so this camping trip was I believe it was a one of our preparatory camping trips for the boundary waters cut teaching you know newer scouts how to canoe and exactly how this will work and the like because you know you don't, you don't just canoe and camp in one spot the entire time you camp for a night or like a day like or two nights in a row at one camping spot and then you go out and you just canoe off into the distance but that's not really an option in Iowa or much anywhere else really other than, unless you have a big long string of lakes all crowded around each other Iowa has a lot of rivers so we did a lot of river canoeing this particular one was I believe on the upper Iowa River and we did a thing of a bunch of the parents like some people you know just were with us to drive up to the point where we were being dropped off and then they drove all the way down to our stopping point and you know camped there for the like day or so that it took us to get there probably more than like just a weekend it was, it was a pretty good system I'm not quite sure who my canoe partner was I don't know if it was my brother or someone else in the group but I remember being in the front of the canoe at this one because I was usually in the front until I became older or at least more experienced and then I knew how to steer which you do in the back of the canoe on this day we were gonna you know could canoe until you deigned not to and then we found a be like a beach or a sandbar to pull up on for lunch because we had all the coolers and all of our camping gear in the canoe with us. And we're gonna try something new. We're gonna get ready for, for Gretchen Cam. Okay, now here's the thing. We have the other one bank of the river. Then we got our we got our sandbar. We stopped for lunch. Now the thing is, is that we have here this stump hanging out over the bank with some of the bank that was underneath it washed away so it's tilted out like angrily at us. See? See it's angry. Yeah. Now here we have, say, say this is a canoe. You know, the current pushed us through really fast like, like that. And now the thing to do is to not be rocketed into the stump is to drag really hard and then do a sharp turn. So we went around the sandbar and parked on the other side for lunch. Delicious lunch. Now one thing I tell new canoers to watch out for when river canoeing or canoeing at all is to watch out for hippos. Because they don't stick out of the water very much. Because you can't really see what goes on underneath the water. You gotta watch out for hippos. Because they're just minding their own business but they will they will screw you up they will take your canoe and throw it to the other side of the river and dump all your stuff now how this river was is that a lot of since the bank fell in a lot of it was under it was cut away underneath the water so we couldn't see it now this produces an undercurrent which is also what made the canoes go so, go so fast through this one area and if we didn't turn it would have rocketed us into the stump so now earlier later let's see let's find something uh... what do i want to use uh... do i need something to represent a kayak mm, uh, let's go uh, here yeah this is let's go with this yeah this is this is a kayak so kayaks are fundamentally smaller 
shallower than canoes, but are also really fun. So the thing is, is that they go and when they turn, in this particular place, they turned so fast they couldn't control it and they flipped. That group of kayakers came around the bend and we, we, we yelled at them to how, how to how to handle that turn without colliding into the stump. But a few of them flipped anyway. And then you know it flipping with, with kayaks happens. No big deal. It looked like they had just you know, been kayaking down this part of the... So they didn't have any stuff with them. Probably, well, they probably had a day pack or whatever. But at one point in time, we see this... Because uh, some of them were in doubles and some of them were in single ki kayaks. And... Uh, this one lady does hit the stump and she goes down. And she doesn't come back up. She, I mean, uh, we believe she like she got sucked into that undercurrent and was like trapped in the stump and trapped in that undercurrent. Everybody underestimates just how powerful how powerful water is. It will mess you up. And you know we like stand and watch. We're like, ah, uh, and just without missing a beat, my dad takes off into the water and wades down and you know we see cuz he's he's a he's a tall man he's a big man and we, you know, we see him go down under and then it's just like it was it was a very long time and we were all very silent and then actually like 20 seconds later my dad comes back up with with the woman in tow like a bunch of the a bunch of the other kayakers just like, like ah! and you're like just really like whew, like that was a close one and you know we we go on with our day so it's just like my dad totally saved that woman's life so yeah right after I tell you this rousing inspiring story of a near drowning I'm going to encourage you to go canoeing just remember it's a true story Did you like this story? Help support Memoirs of a Gretchen by subscribing, liking, or even just leaving a comment. If you'd like to hear a certain topic, say so in the comments, and if I have a story that fits it, I'll tell it. PG-13 though, please. Think of the children! Just remember, it's a true story.